we have our Kunal Bodhra as well as Nuresh Mirani joining us on the technicals and Sandeep Sabarwal is joining us to talk to us about the fundamentals. Let's start with the technicals then. Kunal, what part of this market move today which we saw suddenly could be attributed to maybe a fat finger error or do you think there is this volatility was called for on account of expiry and elections? Good afternoon. So uh, I think fat finger maybe, uh, maybe or maybe not but I would probably believe that it's uh, Adjustment to the uh, India VIX, the second point which you also mentioned that since the markets are heading towards the, uh, you know, the economy is heading towards the elections, you know, the markets are bound to get into some bit of adjustment towards the rise in VIX. Because, you know, if you look at uh, the intraday move for the markets, you know, the sharp fall was just felt into the indices specifically and few odd larger cap names. It was not felt across the overall length and breadth of the mid cap and the small cap arena. I think that's where, uh, you know, I would probably believe that it's, uh, you know, got to do with some adjustment with respect to larger cap names, especially on the option side specifically. Okay, so that's the take coming in on the market and the volatility right now. But Nuresh, what about the strength in the metal names? Do you see more legs to the metals rally? Uh, absolutely. So we've seen uh, some of the names do well, but some of the names are yet to break out into major moves. And more importantly, the base metal, the spot prices have gone up across the board, whether it is aluminium or other names. Uh, so out here, we still have Indalco, which is closer to making a new all-time high, not far away at 620, just 10 bucks away from an all-time high. So that looks so promising. Then Tata Steel, which broke out above 155, 160, still continues to remain strong. JSW Steel should see a much uh, bigger breakout if it sustains above 890. And the leadership names have continued to do well. So Jindal Steel is close to new all-time highs. You have Nalco, which continues to do well. So metal as a pack uh, remains a buy on dips. Uh, names like Hindustan Zing and Vedanta, which have moved up 30-40% quickly. There could be some partial profit booking over there and could be a little pause. But overall, uh, on a correction, uh, still looks interesting. At current levels, Zindalco will remain the top. Okay, point taken. Uh, let's take it across to Sandeep Sabarwal as well. And Sandeep, the question is on telecom sector. Today, of course, everything is running right from a Vodafone to an Airtel to an Indus Towers. And then Bharti Hexacom, the latest entrant as well, is doing quite well. Uh, what's your top bet, if any, within the telecom sector? And what's the recommendation on Vodafone FPU for retail investors? So, uh, Bharti Airtel remains the best bet in uh as a pure play a telecom company, and that's something which we have owned for several years now. Now, the story out here obviously remains that of consolidation and improved ARPUs. The ARPUs in India still are very, very low relative to what they are globally. And to that extent, there is an expectation that uh, as Geo becomes more focused on profitability, we will see more pricing discipline and by definition, higher profits for all of these companies. I think that's the play coming about. Vodafone idea, now it's very tough to uh, figure out what's there for sh uh, minority shareholders because I, f I believe that it's very tough for this company to ever make profit. So if it's not going to make profits, then what do the minority shareholders get out of it? I think uh, it's just uh, a very difficult uh, talk to, for some to be recommended as a buy. So that's the take coming in on uh, the telecom sector. Airtel best plays right now. In fact, we uh, put across this question to Balaji Subramanian of IFL as well, who actually has upgraded the entire sector. Listen in to his take. As far as uh, tariff hikes are concerned, I think uh, uh, we should have them sometime in the second half of this calendar year. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, recent past, we have had uh, tariff hikes uh, uh, once in every two years. And uh, so we had something in the end of 2019, then we had another round in the end of 2021 and uh, one would have expected something to happen by the end of 2023. But I think, uh, uh, you know, uh, with elections uh, uh, happening in the first half of 2024, uh, the next round of tariff hike, uh, you know, should uh, happen pretty soon after the elections. So, you know, that means that, uh, you know, there will be um, an across the board, uh, you know, positivity for uh, all players, uh, especially Vodafone Idea who needs it the most, uh, while, you know, Bharti and uh, Reliance Geo will also uh, see uh, uh, their uh, margins and return ratios improving. And of course, Indus uh, uh, being, uh, uh, you know, uh, linked to uh, Vodafone Idea's prospects, improved financials for Vodafone Idea would uh, mean that, uh, uh, you know, Indus will also benefit both in terms of uh, tower additions 
uh, also on uh, uh, you know working capital and more importantly with the fundraise happening for Vodafone Idea, uh, you know some of the survival prospects of uh, uh, Vodafone Idea uh, also has also have significantly brightened. Okay, shifting focus to what's happening uh, in terms of the top buzzers, 361 uh, is one stock which is actually perking up right now. That stock has managed to see a sharp spike 7% while Angel 1 has been coming off and BSC of course in terms of the entire uh, you know, stock market related ancillaries has had a stellar run not just today, I'm talking about the 52 week chart of BSC, that will tell you the kind of uh, swift gains it's made. Uh, what's your take on that, Sandeep, within this entire stock market ancillary world? Which are the stocks you would recommend? So right now, recommending anything is very tough given the valuations of most of these stocks. But I think in terms of competitive uh, <clears throat> standpoint, obviously, BSE, NSE, they are two, just two exchanges per se. So to that extent, BSE is the uh, one which is listed and that's the play. Then the CDSL, CAMs, etc. I think all of them are a decent growth stocks. Valuation, one has to decide at what price you want to buy. But I think uh, in terms of uh, the growth visibility, I think they keep on growing for several years. And that will give uh, returns to the shareholders. Now, most of them have run up too much. So there might be some corrections at some stage. And those can be used as opportunities to buy. Okay, so opportunities to buy will emerge. You just need to keep tracking what's happening there. Uh, what's the view on IT, Sandeep? Uh, I know you've been waiting on the sidelines, uh, be a bit negative on the IT sector and saying that whenever value emerges, you'll probably look at those counters. Do you see value emerging, especially with respect to the emphasis numbers later today, Vipro expected tomorrow? So the numbers are unknown to us, so tough to make a prediction, but I think the Overall discretionary segment, uh, spending segment doesn't look good at all. And I think there's still budget cuts going on around there. On the AI front where companies are investing, I, I think the Indian companies have been a bit behind in uh, moving ahead on those. And given the pace at which the entire artificial intelligence segment is changing, many companies are unsure of whether they should invest now or wait on invest, etc. So I think that will weigh on the performance at least for this year, this calendar year 2024. So I think it might be premature to buy. However, these are cash generating companies which also do buybacks periodically. So if let's say the large cap ones correct 10-15% from the current levels, I would be interested in buying them at those prices. Okay, a 10 to 15 percent correction is what uh, you know Sandeep is waiting for in the IT companies. But Kunal, what's the view on these gas companies, City Gas Distribution, IGL, MGL, Gujarat Gas, all under pressure? You will use these dips to buy, perhaps? Not really. I think I've always avoided this uh, you know space because of the inconsistency of trend for these stocks. So you know, even last week, uh, I think if I'm not wrong, these stocks had shown signs of a breakout for themselves coming out of the. I think two, three weeks of correction or price correction, two, three months of price correction for themselves. But you know, the nature of these stocks on the medium to long term charts have always uh, you know, indicated that you know, these uh, stocks uh, have an unsustainable breakout. They tend to uh, you know, go back into a corrective phase, come back towards retesting the breakout levels and then even falling below. So adjusting this with a, you know, a trading kind of a play, having a, you know, a key stop loss as well as a target in place could be a lot more tricky and that's why I typically avoid this space. Okay, avoiding the city gas distribution names and the market too is clearly avoiding it today given the kind of slip that we have seen. Well, what are dates turning out to be for uh, 361, which is the wealth management arm of IFL. Another wealth management arm which has got listed is Nuvama. And very few wealth management clear businesses are there. I mean, the story is very simple, folks. If India is growing, financial markets will grow and the diversity to manage wealth is going to be there. If financial markets grow, intermediaries would go. And these are businesses which are like toll. Doesn't matter what the market performance is, as long as you are using the services, you'll have to pay them a toll. And that, in a sense, is a simple business model, which is that they distribute, they sell, they market, and then they offer you wealth solutions. In that, they make commissions. And uh, their commissions, of course, demand, strong market means more demand, but a bad market does not mean no money comes their way. That is something which is very unique about this wealth management business. You know, Sandeep, these are stocks where you would say, okay, I'm bullish and I'll keep buying these stocks. But at the current juncture, let's say if you buy this basket, which is a, which is a bet on Indian financial market growth, CDSL, 
BSc, MCX, or even India, uh, you know, Novama, 360, can one consider making a basket of some of these stocks? Yeah, for the long term, yeah, it's possible because, but I think uh, rather than all of these uh, wealth management outfits, I think uh, if someone has to take a bet, AMCs might be a better bet than these companies. Because I think uh, all these companies making commissions out of clients, it's very tough to give them a very high PE and the markets are giving them an excessively high PE at this stage, which I think is unjustified. Nestle, Sandeep, given that the stock of Nestle has fallen because of a report that, okay, there is sugar in baby food. Now, I can get into a long argument whether it is good or bad, but the fact that this is something which is unlikely to have an impact on the long-term business or the sales of Nestle baby food. The stock has fallen in reaction to a news. Is it a good time to revisit a stock like Nestle? So Nestle is one stock among the consumer stocks which actually held on. So I think it's corrected now. So it's not that it's cheap. So I think this issue should be an issue only if they do not disclose it and put it, which I don't think they would have done. I'm not sure about that, but I don't think they would have done that. So to that extent, everyone knows what is in it. Now, uh, consumer basket, some of the stocks are getting cheap. For example, something like HUL I was seeing in the morning. I think it's at the same level where it was in, I remember right, 2017 or 2019. I think many of these large consumer companies have gone through phases of consolidation. And I think for conservative investors, it might be reasonable to start taking small bets in them. Uh, let's pull up the intraday chart and the candlestick chart of the Bank <coughs> Nifty, please, because that's the index which is coming under a lot of pressure right now. I think 800 to 900 points shaved off from the Bank Nifty from the highest point of the trading session. A 400-point slide coming in there. And names like ICICI Bank, Access Bank, HDFC Bank, these are the biggest drag on the markets right now. In fact, Access Bank is down a solid 3% as we speak. ICICI Bank is down over a percent and HDFC Bank too. Uh, Nuresh, what's the view on these banking names and the banking index itself? So the bank nifty continues to um, not be able to show that momentum we are not seeing uh, follow up price action so the stocks did make a recovery and uh, post the current uh, uh, say geopolitical hits uh, the index has gone into again into that sideways slumber but we are not seeing any major breakdowns so uh, we are back to testing that 1000 1030 for access bank which ideally should hold 1050 uh, 2030 for ICICI Bank, same way 1450 1480 for HDFC Bank. So for now, uh, expecting some bit of a recovery from current levels. Uh, overall, so expecting a bounce from here, it's a good entry point for a lot of these banking names. You know, that is the pain point where banks are just, just not chipping in. Sandeep, so what's the trade now? I mean, should one look at global macros? Should one look at election results? Should one look at beneficiaries of summer? Should one look at uh, pure IT because TCS numbers were okay? Things are bottoming out for the sector. What is the trade now for the next three, six months? I think the next couple of months could still be difficult given the fact that the global valuations will adjust to the fact that from expecting very aggressive rate cuts this year, there could be a possibility there'll be no rate cuts. And in that scenario, the valuations of assets across the board, especially equity markets globally, could adjust. So I think that's one risk. Elections, I don't see as a risk, but uh, we never know. So I think uh, there'll always be a 5-10% risk we have to build in. But it's tough to build that in given that uh, the probability of a change is low at this stage. So uh, it has to be global macros and global trends. A global correction, uh, I don't think is still over. And to that extent, the Indian market correction also could not be, might not be over. Now, the extent of fall can be debated, but I think if markets move another 5% down from the current levels, then I think the downside will become very limited and at that time we could find much better value. Another stock, Nuresh, which has turned today is ICICI General, uh, ICICI Lombard. 
has the stock decisively turned it's been more like a, a start and a stop kind of a stock so very interesting chart formation here so if we go back to 2020 and the stock topped out around 1650 to 1680 levels uh, we have been pausing around that band right now 1650 to 1730 has been the new range for the last two months and today it's uh, hit a new all time high so it looks like a fresh flag breakout and it looks like a uh, finally a trend coming up after 2 3 years uh, so a trending stock right now, I would expect it to slowly go towards 1850 to 2000. So uh, looks like a fresh breakout and a buy at current levels. Okay, so that's about ICICI Lombard. Of course, the earnings were quite strong. So after a couple of quarters of disappointment, they managed to surprise the street with a very strong performance. And that's the reason the stock is getting rewarded as well. In terms of the other big movers right now, well, Mankind Pharma is up 5%. There's a bit of a recovery in Wokhar as well, 5% gain coming in. And then there was positive news for the likes of Jubilant Pharma, etc. as well. Um, is this a space, Sandeep, that you have been looking at positively? No, small mid-cap pharma I don't invest in usually because their balance sheets are very tough to analyze. So I largely stick to the larger ones like Dr. Reddy's on Pharma, etc. In the Star, another one which has done rather well for itself, Bharti Hexacom, recent listing from the Bharti Group. It's a business which is owned by a company which is owned by Bharti and the government of India. That's done well. Amra Raja, you look at the stock and you would say there is no correction in this market whatsoever. Geo Financials, what year it's turning out to be. So there are a lot of outliers. There are a lot of outliers in the market uh, this year. And some of these stocks have really gone against the law of gravity. Amra Raja, look at the change in this year. And when I say this year, four months, that's it. Not even four months, three and a half months actually. And uh, what do we have on Amra Raja? 21% return. Geo Financials, vertical line. Big gain, I think, is visible even in Bharti Hexacom ever since it's gone public. I think 800 rupees? It, uh, the issue price was 570 thereabouts. Got 900. listed with a gain of 800 around 30%. Listed, correct. Yeah. 900. Sandeep, uh, any chance you track Bharti Exacom? No, no. I'm just holding Bharti Airtel. Okay, so Bharti Airtel is of course one stock that Sandeep is holding on to, but Telecom clearly is having a stellar run off late. Uh, but to tell you uh, in context of what's happening to the Vodafone FPO, we had tracked that number at 1 p.m. The FPO subscription was very paltry at just 3%. Of course, today is the first day and it's just taking off. But uh, for now, the sentiment wasn't very, very strong, at least that stock is concerned. In terms of other losers, Schneider is down around 5%. You have Aegis Logistics, which is down in the trading session. Even though from the gaining side, the likes of uh, BPCL as well as Power Grid, they have been doing quite well. Um, Power Grid is actually up 2.5%. This is a question, Sandeep, we have been posing to ourselves as well as the experts. The power demand mismatch that we are seeing, it's going to be a very hot summer. We have already seen the indications of that. Um, in context of that, which are the power names which you think can still probably rally from here on? I think playing for one or two months of summers is very tough. But I think uh, Power Grid is a decent story because it's a utility and uh, transmission investments will continue to be strong and remain strong for several years given the real estate, uh, real uh, uh, renewable energy events which are happening. Other than that, I think most of the stocks have run up so much that again, it's tough to find value across the board. Although we do hold some transformer stocks and transmission companies. The idea wasn't to play it only for the summer thing, but the but the reality is, Sandeep, that this power demand supply mismatch is a lot more fundamental than just, let's say, coal-related or about-related because demand is increasing on a very consistent basis and, of course, the supply hasn't really managed to catch up. In fact, on the discussion and on the topic of summer power demand, we did speak with a whole host of experts. Listen in to their take as well. In terms of uh, the storage, storage is an integral component of the whole equation. Uh, if we have to replace the fossil fuel capacity, because uh, if you need 24 by 7 through re renewables, then storage becomes a key component of the whole equation. So we have uh, actually uh, plans to tender out a lot of storage. So we are looking at storage also very aggressively and we are technology agnostic on that. And this year it is expected that around two, the power uh, demand touches 260 gigawatt figure this summer. 
so uh, to meet the requirement uh, from nrc side uh, against the uh, production of uh, 10 uh, million metric ton from our talavera uh, mine compared to the uh, last financial year in this financial year the uh, coal stocks at the power stations uh, as well as uh, at the pit mine pit heads uh, are uh, at peak so uh, i don't think uh, that situation arises this financial year it is better situation than the last financial year Okay, so that's a commentary on the power demand mismatch. But uh, time now to take the closing trade ideas from our te- uh, technical experts. So, Anurag, should go first. So that would be a buy on ICICI Lombard, which is a promising uh, stock, looking towards a breakout towards all-time high, good consolidation done for the last uh, two months. Uh, expecting it to go towards eighteen fifty in the short term. Okay, so ICICI Lombard. What about you, Kanal? So I initiated a buy in uh, Linde India last week. Uh, in fact, this week on uh, Tuesday, when the stock was at six thousand eight hundred nine hundred levels, looks attractive as a chart. The volume setup and the price setup is also very attractive. So we'll continue to uh, have a bullish view here. Okay. On that note, Sandeep, we'll let you go. Thanks so much for making time and speaking with us.